The laws of indices or powers. Law number one. A to the power P multiplied by A to the power Q gives us A to the power P plus Q. So basically, if we are multiplying and we have the bases to be the same, we just add the powers. So an example of that would be 3 to the power of 5 multiplied by 3 to the power of 2. Since the bases are the same, we have both 3s, we add the powers. So 5 plus 2 makes 7, 3 to the power of 7. Okay, law number 2. If we are dividing powers, this line here means divide, dividing powers with the same base, the rule is we subtract the powers. So a to the power of p divided by a to the power of q gives us a to the power of p minus q. An example of that, 4 to the power of 8 divided by 4 to the power of 3 gives us 4 to the power of 8 minus 3, which gives us 4 to the power of 5. The third law. When we are raising a power to a higher power, we multiply the powers. So a to the power of p raised to the power of q gives us a to the power of p multiplied by q. The p and the q are stuck together and two things stuck together in maths means multiply. An example of that would be x squared raised to the power of n plus 1 gives us x squared multiplied by n plus 1 and 2 by n gives us 2n and 2 by 1 gives us 2. So we end up with x to the power of 2n plus 1. Law 4, a to the power of 0 equals 1. Anything to the power of 0 equals 1. So 3 to the power of 0 equals 1. Law 5, a to the power of minus p gives us 1 over a to the power of positive p. An example of that is 2 to the power of minus 3 becomes 1 over 2 to the power of positive 3. And 2 to the power of 3 gives us 8. So 1 over 8 is our answer. Law 6. a to the power of 1 over q gives us the cute root of a. So an example of that would be a to the power of a third gives us the third root of a. This is not 3 multiplied by root a. It's the third root of a. So what by what by what will give us a? Another example of that would be a to the power of a half gives us the square root of a. Sometimes you could stick a little 2 in there, but it doesn't really matter. Square root of a. We usually see it as the square root of a. And a to the power of a quarter gives us the fourth root of a. a to the power of a fifth would give us the fifth root of a. a to the power of a sixth would give us the sixth root of a, etc. Next we have law 7, which says a to the power of p over q gives us the cute root of a to the power of p. So basically the denominator comes out in front to become the cute root and the numerator becomes the new power. So we get the cute root of a raised to the power of p. An example of that would be 27 to the power of 4 over 3. The denominator becomes the cute root, so it becomes the third root of 27 to the power of 4. So the numerator becomes the power. So we get the third root of 27 raised to the power of 4. Law 8 tells us that AB raised to the power of P can be broken down as A to the power of P multiplied by B to the power of P. An example of that would be 3x raised to the power of 4. It's going to be 3 to the power of 4 multiplied by x to the power of 4. 3 to the power of 4 will give us 81 and x to the power of 4 just stays as x to the power of 4. So we end up with 81x to the power of 4. And law 9 tells us that a over b raised to the power of p can be broken down to a to the power of p divided by b to the power of p. An example of that would be 2x over y raised to the power of 4 will give us 2x to the power of 4 divided by y to the power of 4. 2 to the power of 4 will give us 16 and x to the power of 4 stays as x to the power of 4 y to the power of 4 stays as y to the power of 4.
We can always also um, use law 8 to help us with thirds. So root AB equals root A multiplied by root B. So an example of that would be, let's say we had the square root of 20. Well, that is the same thing as the square root of 2 multiplied by the square root of 10, because 2 times 10 is 20. It's also the same thing as the square root of 4 multiplied by the square root of 5, because 4 times 5 is 20. We would rather go with root 4 root 5, because 4 is a square number, so we can simplify this a bit more. And the square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 5 can't be simplified, so it just ends up as 2 root 5. We can also use a law 9 to help us with this thirds rule. So root a divided by b can be broken down to root a divided by root b. Okay, so for example, let's say we had root 20 over 4. That can be broken down to root 20 divided by root 4, which can be simplified again to root 4 root 5, because 4 by 5 is 20, divided by 2, because the square root of 4 is 2, and that can be simplified again to 2 root 5 over 2, because the square root of 4 is 2, root 5 can't be simplified, and that is all still over 2. Okay, so here is a typical example from the Liebenstead Higher Level course. Write each of the following in the form 2 to the power of k, where k is an element of the real number set. So we basically want to get each of these um, questions with a base of 2 to the power of something. So the first one, uh, 32, and we just change to 2 to the power of 5 because 2 by 2 by 2 by 2 by 2 gives us 32. So 32 with a base of 2 is just going to be 2 to the power of 5. The second one, root 8 over 16. Well, the square root of 8, um, we start off by just breaking down the 8. And another way to rewrite 8 is 2 to the power of 3. So 8 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3. And then the root 8 becomes 2 to the power of 3 raised to the power of a half. Because if we have a look at our sixth rule from our laws, a to the power of 1 over q, 1 over q gives us the cute root of a. So we're kind of working backwards with this. So a to the power of a half, or 2 to the power of 3, which is the same thing as a to the power of a half, would give us the square root of 8. So we're going to go from the square root of 8 to 2 over 3 to the power of a half. We also want to rewrite 16 as a base of 2. So 2 to the power of 4 will give us 16. So now we have this step here. Then we notice that we are raising a power to a higher power. So that uh, brings us to rule 3. So the rule is when we raise a power to a higher power, we multiply the powers. So we're going to multiply the 3 and the half to give 3 over 2. So now we have 2 to the power of 3 over 2 divided by 2 to the power of 4. And then this brings us to law 2, which tells us that if we're dividing powers with the same base, we subtract the powers. So that's how we get 2 to the power of 3 over 2 minus 4. And 3 over 2 minus 4 will give us a 5 over 2. So we end up with 2 minus 5 over 2. Then the third question. 2 to the power of n plus 1 multiplied by 4 to the power of n. So the dot means multiply. So again, as like before, we want to change everything to a base of 2. So the first term we have, 2 to the power of n plus 1, already has a base 2, so that's fine. We'll just leave that alone for a minute. And then we have multiplied by 4 to the power of n. And 4 can be changed to 2 squared. So 4 to the power of n is the same thing as 2 squared raised to the power of n. So now we have a power raised to a higher power, which is law 3 again. And the rule is we multiply the powers. And 2 multiplied by n gives us 2n. 
a number multiplied by a letter, we stick them together. So now we have 2 to the power of n plus 1, that didn't change, multiplied by 2 to the power of 2n. Now we are multiplying, that dot there means multiplying, powers with the same base, they both have a base of 2, which brings us to law number 1. Multiplying powers with the same base, we add the powers. So it's going to be n plus 1 plus 2n, so that's where that plus comes from there. And then all we have to do is just simplify. n plus 2n is 3n, and the 1 just stays on its own. So we get 2 to the power of 3n plus 1. Okay, so the last part of our question is root 8 to the power of n plus 1 divided by 2 to the power of n minus 1. So again, we want to start off by changing everything with uh, to 2 uh, to the power of k, so everything to a base of 2. So we s let's start with the 8. 8, we know, is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3. And all of this is going to be raised to the power of n plus 1. And then our denominator is okay for the moment to stay the same. 2 to the power of n minus 1 is already a base of 2. So our numerator, we have 2 to the power of 3 raised to the power of n plus 1. So we are raising a, par raising a power to a higher power. So that gives us rule 3. And we know the rule is that we multiply the powers when we're raising a power to a higher power. So 3 multiplied by n gives us 3n, a number times a letter we stick it together. And 3 multiplied by three, 1 gives us 3. So now we have a big square root, 2 to the power of 3n plus 3, divided by 2n minus 1. Okay, so then if we just work inside the root for the moment, we have 2 to the power of something divided by 2 to the power of something. So we have the same base and we're dividing, so we follow rule 2, or law 2. When we're dividing powers with the same base, we subtract the powers. So that's where that minus sign comes from. So it's 3n plus 3 minus n minus 1. So we get 3n plus 3 minus n minus 1. Okay, so we still, and we still have our big root. So 3n minus n gives us 2n. And then 3 minus minus 1 gives us 4. Okay, so now we have root 2 to the power of 2n plus 4. And we want to get rid of the square root. So if we have a look at law 6, a to the power of 1 over q gives us the cute root of a. So we want to work backwards. So we have the cute root of a gives us a to the power of 1 over q. So that square root becomes to the power of a half. So all of this to the power of a half. If this was the third root, it would be to the power of a third. If this was the fourth root, it would be to the power of a quarter. If this was the fifth root, it would be to the power of a fifth, etc. So now we have a power raised to a higher power. So we follow law three. So we want to multiply our powers. And 2n plus 4 multiplied by a half. 2n times a half will just give us n because a half of 2 is just 1, so 1n. And a half multiplied by 4 gives us 2, because a half of 4 is 2. So you end up with 2n plus 2.